exciting two-seat sports roadster in history. If you're envisioning the sublime handling Lotus Salon, or the Mazda Miata, the highest production roadster of all time, you're in very good company. The problem is, you're wrong. Okay, don't start sending hate mail to me. I've owned an Elan, I've owned two Miatas, I've driven thousands of miles in both. They're great cars, I love them. But this car is more fun than a barrel full of monkeys playing with a barrel full of monkeys. Determined to create a sporting image for its brand, Suzuki launched the Cappuccino in late 1991. Advertising, it fulfilled its customers' dreams of owning a stylish and very affordable two-seater sports car. Built to the maximum of the K-Car class, the car was less than 130 inches long, weighed under 1,600 pounds, and was propelled by a screaming 660cc dual overhead cam, 12-valve, three-cylinder engine fed by a turbo and an intercooler. With just over 15,000 first-generation cars built, the Capo instantly became known as the king of high-performance Ks. But can an actual human being fit in this thing? Well, in a word, yes, even if you're six foot four. Ingress and egress, it's a little, uh, it's a little tricky. It takes a little flexibility in the knees, but realistically, there's just enough leg room and more headroom than a Acura NSX. Speaking of headroom, the Capo's four position top remains unique in automotive history. To catch more of the sun's rays, simply flip latches and remove the outer aluminum panels for a T-bar configuration. Two more latches removes the center panel and it comes out and stores with the other panels in the trunk to create a Porsche 911 Targa effect with its rigid rear header and glass rear window with defroster. But it's actually configuration four, which is my favorite. You see, all you have to do to get the full experience is turn around, lower a latch, reach in your center console, hit a little button and let that go and boom. Full Roadster. The best way to describe the cappuccino is like all a fertility pregnancy. It just delivers in a way you're really not expecting. <laughs> Judged entirely on its numbers, most Americans wouldn't give this car a second look. Well, actually, they'd probably laugh at the first look. Is only rated at 63 horsepower and 63 foot pounds of torque. That's not much. But Americans are going to forget our own history of underrating Suzuki, knowing that the maximum allotted horsepower for the K car class was 63. Well, that's what they put, which was the same as a similar engine without an intercooler and turbocharger. This has both of those. So what's the real figure? Well, it depends on who you ask. Maybe between 85 and 100, which still doesn't sound like much. But let me tell you, boy, it's plenty. Pull 
off that limiter though. It'll give you a check engine light, but it'll let you go well over 100. Handling is courtesy of four-wheel independent suspension, the type found on many expensive cars. It's rear-wheel drive so you can drift it. Great four-wheel disc brakes. There's 50-50 weight distribution, but Suzuki said it only achieved that with two people in the car. But considering I weigh about just twice as much as the standard Japanese adult, it's 50-50 right now. Inevitably, the question always comes up. Is it hard to drive a right-hand drive car? Well, to be honest, it's like sleeping on the other side of the bed. You get acclimated pretty quickly. There are a couple of idiosyncrasies. You gotta learn to shift with your left. And like most cars that are right-hand drive, the gear shift pattern is the same as you'd find on a left-hand drive car. But since you're shifting with your left, the turn signal is used with your right hand. So, don't be caught off guard if you accidentally put on the wipers. They couldn't have named this car any better. Because this thing is as addictive as a tall cup of cappuccino. Well, it gives you that feeling of just being jittery and alive. It's actually more like having a cup of cappuccino. Well, dumped in your lap. It just makes you move. It makes you jump. This thing is alive. The bottom line is the Suzuki Cappuccino is what a sports car is all about. It's about the feel, the sounds, the handling, the overall performance, the fact that it makes you feel alive. It makes you want to drive. The fact that it's got a Suzuki badge really just keeps it a secret from all those Ferrari and Porsche and BMW and Audi and Lamborghini and all those other guys. But if, if you want one of the best automotive experiences that any money could buy, buy one of these. Or even better, sell the Ferrari and buy like 20 of these. Cause this is just downright awesome.